Using the power of the internet, you can now watch GLC on any TV in the US, Canada, the UK, and Ireland with Roku. Basically, a box that connects to your television. Roku acts as a middleman between your internet connection and your television. So if you have internet service at your home, chances are high that you can watch all of the great GLC programming. And best of all, it's highly affordable too, with only a one-time fee ranging from $50 to $100. Log on to our website, www.glc.us.com, for details on how you can watch GLC via Roku. Coopers want to welcome you to the weekend edition on Friday evening um, update. Correct. I got it in, right. In your roundup best. Well, ask me why the roundup best. Well, because roundup's still going on. Good. That's what I want the people to understand. <laughs> that the roundup is still going on and we still need your help. Because in my opinion, after 32 years of hanging out at this place, this is probably the most important event that we have ever had it's the most important time ever yes it's like oh my gosh with that attack that happened at that synagogue in west jerusalem it's like three miles from the temple mount mm -hmm. in a safe neighborhood in two the the israeli part of the city not east jerusalem that's right where the arabs are dominant mm -hmm. where they're dominant because jewish people live there too they but do. yes it was in west jerusalem mm -hmm. anyway no, i have been watching I, I watched a video uh as much as i could stand yesterday on the internet with a, a guy they were doing an experiment he was at berkeley in southern california and he was waving a palestinian flag and you know doing those kind of chanting things. People were walking by not saying anything or giving them thumbs up or whatever. They brought out an Israeli flag. People started cursing at them and I'm saying the bad words and shouting all kinds of obscenities over the Israeli flag. I'm like, Lord, there has never been a time that is more important for GLC to exist. We are the mm -hmm. media voice outside mm -hmm. the nation of Israel that is telling the truth about what's really going on. And Even, we're desperate for your support of this station yes. so that we can continue to do what God has called us to do. You know what I would love to have? A copy of our book on enough propaganda if they read that, all these people that are protesting against Israel would read that. They'd understand that the greatest propaganda machine that has ever existed since the days of Hitler, and I remember those days, is right now. And where, how did this happen? If you read the book, you'd find out that all the propaganda that's so good by the Muslims, who was their teachers? Arafat was one of them. No, it was the Gestapo. The Gestapo, that's true, yes. When they uh, escaped out of Germany after World War II, they went to Damascus and set up shop. And guess who they taught? You got it, the Muslims. Mm -hmm. Okay, enough of my preaching? Well, I have some really good news. I'd okay. like to share some really good news. Okay. Um, it is. Okay, on Monday or Wednesday... We might have confused you a little bit with the update news that we're going to be doing. We will have a update news this coming Monday. We won't have an update news the Monday following Thanksgiving. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we weren't real clear about that. Okay. Right. Now, the good news is, is the crew is doing a happy dance because we will be closing at noon on Wednesday. So that my hardworking, dedicated crew is like falling over half dead. So we won't be doing the news on Wednesday or Friday or, or Monday. Monday. Okay, next week, not on Wednesday, not on Friday. 
and then not the following Monday. That's right. Okay. But I did uh, visit with a, a gal today who's a partner and a frequent flyer in the bookstore, and she is coming on board to work in the bookstore part-time for us. Great. So it looks like after Thanksgiving, the bookstore will be open Monday and Tuesday. Mm-hmm. That's all we can open right now. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, we're, I'm, I'm going to be trying to get everything caught up with the help of Becky. Lord, thank you for Becky. You Amen. know, she has listened to probably 170, and I'm not exaggerating, messages on the answering machine. Monica's fielding calls in the office, and she's writing down inf- information. And now I've got to gather what these two wonderful women have done and process it. So... <laughs> and then at some point, I've got to get back to finishing up the roundup process. <laughs> so anyway, but it's never a dull moment. Oh, right. And it's, it's always lots of fun. I think uh, first and foremost, we've got the weekend lineup. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at that. Yohanan and Rocio Salamanca. This was the last program we recorded with them before they headed back south to Mexico. That'll air tonight, Friday at 8 p.m. And then again, early Sunday morning at 5 a.m., Dr. Scott on allergies. This was a brand new one that mom and I recorded with him just a few weeks ago. It will air Saturday at 1 a.m., Saturday evening at 8 p.m., Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m., and Monday morning at 7 a.m. We get all kinds of good reports about people he's helping. Mm -hmm. Not from him, but from the people he's helping. Then you just saw on the screen Ari Abramowitz. Great program, and I wanted you to see that again this week, especially in light of what happened. Amen. With the in Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. Saturday at 5 a.m., Sunday at 1 a.m., Sunday night at 8 p.m., Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. And the guy with the boats, (laughs) Kim Thornsburg, that'll just air Monday at 1 a.m. So, chances that most of you will be able to catch that repeat are pretty slim. I doubt if I'll be sleeping, but, (laughs) Um, and I think, Dad, you've got a letter. I've got a letter, and before I let you listen to it, you've got to say you're going to contact us on helping us on this update project. Well, you know, we still have a ways to go. You know, the first words I said to my parents when I saw them this morning, because I went from my house next door to their house, and I said, Okay, well, I just paid $23,000 in liability insurance. Oh. Okay, that's, that's just the liability insurance. That's our commercial, our Inland Marine. Inland Marine is all of our towers and transmitters and whatnot. And then our auto policy. So, <laughs> $23,000. That's a chunk of change. It is. Yeah. But thank you, Lord. I had it in the bank to pay it because you know what? If I didn't pay it today, come Sunday, we were canceled. Ooh. That's why I had to pay it. I got a cancellation notice. There we go. Yep. Okay. This is one of those letters that came in. Oh, well, let me just tell you something. Okay. Okay. They might have six foot of snow in Buffalo, New York, which I would not want to contend with. But out here in West Texas, especially in the area that we're in, You go north to uh, Lubbock. We even had an ice storm here last year. Mm -hmm. But you get them in Lubbock, you really get them in Amarillo, in all of uh, this area. This is where a lot of our equipment is. Mm -hmm. Ice storms. Towers attract them. They do. (laughs) Because what happens is it's like the sleet attaches to all of that metal. And my goodness. I, I can tell you that uh, I was looking at uh, the credit card that our chief engineer uses, and I try to keep an eye on that because a little over a year ago, it it hit the limit, and he wasn't too happy with me because he couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do anything. But I was comparing that to what it was last month because I just entered all of the stuff last night to reconcile that card. Everything was double. Wow. His expenses were double, which means Dell has been on the road twice as much he as has. before. He's just He's gone here. constantly. I mm-hmm. finally emailed him something today. He said, I need your signature on this. I've been hoping to see you, but, you know, everyone else signed off two weeks ago. But you can't, you can't catch the guy if he's never here. I know. And he went to Snyder to do the monthly check today. Mm-hmm. Well, you see, 
digital TV is a whole lot more consuming to personnel and engineering than the old analog system. Well, you know, four years ago, Dell also had a couple of assistants working yes. for him that he doesn't have anymore. That's right. So he's like everybody else. I was counting on my hands the number of people that are here at this location, including mom and dad now. It's gone from 50 down to 10. So what does that tell you? We're all working hard and looking forward to Thanksgiving. Yes. Amen. And especially the last two of the 10. Oh, that's us. I've got a letter here, okay? No, no it's not I, I, you know what? I know that you are not looking forward to Thanksgiving any more than Ryan is, or Danny, mm -hmm. or Vanita. That's right. Or yours truly, or Corey. That's right. Or no. Vina, or no. Dell, oh, or Mason. <laughs> no, I'm just Monica. glad I'm still in Or employee. Monica. Yeah, Monica, you know, Monica, not so much. She just got back to work to Tuesday. She's been out a month. She doesn't need any time off. <laughs> Okay, well, this letter that I'm going to read here was one of the ones that came in on the answering machine. Okay. It says, I have got to say how much your TV programs mean to me. I found you three years ago by accident, but have watched ever since. I have to tell you how much my life has been enriched through all of your guests. I enjoy every one of your programs. I have learned more in the last three years than I have in 50 years of going to church. And I have just, I have, I just have to bless you. Okay, I got that out. Have a great day. Susan left this message on the answering machine. So we don't know where Susan's Thank from. you, Susan. Wow. <laughs> don't know where she's but from. But I will clarify something for you. You said you found us by accident. There are no accidents with God. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's, that's so true. What do we got going well, on? Uh, this is from David Wilkerson, and he called it Bread of Strength. And he says, he once spent a week weeping before the Lord, crying out to him for a message of comfort and hope for all the hurting believers who wrote to his ministry. And while working in New York City with addicts, alcoholics, and the homeless, I've prayed, Lord, everywhere I look, I see pain, distress, grief, and trouble. What message can I possibly give to those in such dire need? What's your word to them? Surely you care for these precious people. Surely you long to bring them a word that can set them free. Then he gave me assurance that he has provided a way to strengthen every child of his to resist the enemy. This strength comes only from eating the bread sent from heaven. Our spiritual health depends on getting this bread into us. Listen carefully to the words of Jesus. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me, John 6, 57. Jesus was in such close communion with the Father and was so committed to doing only his will that the Father's words became his very food and drink. Jesus was sustained daily by hearing and seeing what the Father wanted, which was a result of spending much time alone with him. Jesus told his disciples, I have meat to eat that you do not know about. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And that's John um, 34. He also instructed them, labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. John 6, 27. We dare not miss the secret of this strength. Even as Christ lived by the Father, we must also receive our life by feeding on Christ. And when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, the manna that sustained them was dispensed daily. Through this example, God's telling us that what we ate of Christ yesterday will not supply our need for today. We must admit we'll starve spiritually and become weak and helpless without a daily supply of fresh heavenly bread. Hmm. We must come to the Lord's table often. His word is our bread. Very good. 
It is indeed. It's a good reminder. It is. You can't have strength on something you ate yesterday. That's right. (laughs) Okay, this first article that uh, we're bringing to you is a little bit different than what we normally do, but I I just love this. It's called Auntie Barbie. Not like Uncle Aunt Barbie, but Auntie Barbie. And this is from a girl, that would be me, who from the time I was very little, every penny I got for my birthday or any any chores or anything, I saved up to buy Barbies. I still own these Barbies. <laughs> They're in a box. <laughs> but earlier this year, artist and researcher Nicolet Lamb captured the internet's imagination by creating a doll whose body is based on the average measurements of a 19-year-old woman in the U.S. The idea behind the doll was to make one that reflects the image of a typical young woman rather than the overly idealized and clearly underweight Barbie doll. The crowdfunding campaign to create the doll kicked off after creator Nicolet Lamb made a prototype of sorts for an art project. He gave the doll average body proportions using data from the Center for Disease Control and placed it next to a Barbie doll. Barbie has been heavily criticized as given her proportions, it has been estimated that she would weigh around 110 pounds as a real human, meaning a BMI, a body mass index of 16.24, which, you know, falls under the anorexic category. Lamb found in previous research that her sizing of 36, 18, 33 did not really correspond at all to the average uh, 32, 31, 33. (laughs) The result was Namely, who stands about 10.72 inches tall, about 10 and three quarter inches, and wears relatively toned down outfits and makeup compared with her Mattel counterpart. And now the designer who became so frustrated with Barbie's frighteningly disproportionate body that he created the new realistic doll for children has released an add-on pack complete with acne, cellulite, (laughs) and stretch marks. For about $6, children can now customize their dolls with marks commonly found on bodies of all shapes and sizes including freckles, stretch marks, acne, moles, cellulite, and blushing cheeks. Children can also adorn Lamilly, Lamily, uh, according to the success of her latest adventure. Uh, with stitches, scrapes and scratches, bruises, scars, mosquito bites, grass, dirt stains, and even a cast featured in the pack. Temporary tattoos and stylish blue thick rim glasses are also included. Lamb took the doll for a test run at an independent school in the U.S. where second grade kids remarked on how pretty the doll was and with many stating that she looked like their sisters or aunts. One kid said, she's really unique because I don't have other dolls like this. It looks real. The children were then asked to name the job that the doll might hold with suggestions spanning swimmer to teacher to a computer job to pilot. However, the kids said that Barbie probably had a fashion job. The fact that Lamely is deemed capable of these professions runs in stark contrast contrast to a recent Barbie related I can be a computer engineer book, which drew heavy criticism as it appeared that Barbie could not be a very good computer engineer without the help of a man, according to the book's creators. <laughs> And, oh. and this next article is not a very happy article. Uh, it comes from Good it's M- Morning serious. America. It's a very serious article. And pay attention if you have babies that are in, what do you call them? <laughs> strollers. Strollers, yes. Nearly 5 million Graco baby strollers have been recalled due to finger amputation hazard. But an ABC News investigation found that if this recall goes like most safety recalls, a vast majority could end up still on the market, posing a threat to infants for years to come. 
The recall to be announced by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission and Canadian and Mexican officials says Graco has received reports of 11 finger injuries, including six reports of fingertip amputations, four reports of partial fingertip amputation, and one finger laceration. The recall affects 11 models of Graco strollers made from August 2000 to September 2014, about 4.7 million strollers in the U.S., more than 200,000 in Canada, and over 10,000 in Mexico. Owners are told to contact Graco immediately to get a free repair kit and before the kit comes to exercise, you know, extreme care when unfolding and using the stroller. A CPSC official told ABC News the fix is very easy to install, and if parents just safely engage the lock, they can use the stroller until the new hinge cover arrives. The bigger problem found by the ABC News 2020 investigation is that most recalled products are not turned in or fixed, remaining in homes or listed for sale. Under current federal law, there's no minimum effort that manufacturers have to make or money they have to spend to get the word out about safety recalls. It's illegal to sell a recalled product, but in a joint investigation with 17 ABC News affiliates across the country, reporters found a wide range of recalled products easily available for resale. Elliot Kay, the head of the CPSC, said, all too often, manufacturers give only lip service to safety and fail to spend the money necessary to make sure their recall are widely known by American families. Kay said the government estimates only 20% of all recalled products are returned or accounted for. In the worst case, uh, it can be as low as 5%. To see if a product you've purchased has been recalled, go to www.saferproducts.gov. For more information on the stroller recall, you can visit the Graco website. That's spelled G-R-A-C-O. Mm -hmm. Log on, check it out. Yeah. They'll give you a, a free repair kit. Mm -hmm. So it's something you want to do. It sure okay, is. Okay, the news is now a little bit more serious. Uh, we've got some briefs from the ICEJ. Mm -hmm. The Islamist terrorist militia Hamas called for a day of rage against Israel on Friday, imploring Palestinians in the West Bank to clash with Israeli security forces in solidarity with the Aska Mosque and Jerusalem riots. Did occur Thursday evening in Eastern Jerusalem neighborhoods as police announced that they had recently intercepted a massive shipment of fireworks, knives, swords, and tasers at the Ashdod port, believed to be on its way to Jerusalem for use in rioting. Our holy sites are being desecrated, and our Aska Mosque is being destroyed and taken over, Yehal Musa declared. Every Palestinian is required to take the initiative and move to defend our identity and existence. Police were on heightened alert in the capital, and the Palestinian Authority issued a statement that PA security forces would not allow Hamas to incite Palestinians to engage in violence that could plunge the whole region into anarchy and lawlessness. However, the Fatah Central Committee also sent a message to the White House blaming Israel for the deteriorating situation and appealing for direct U.S. intervention. Oh, yeah. A similar message to the Quartet, which is the U.S., EU, U.N., and Russia, begged for intervention to halt the continuation of Israeli assaults will lead to the escalation of the cycle of violence, chaos, extremism, and bloodletting. Oh, my. I haven't heard about any Jewish people getting in their car and running over Palestinians. Have you? No. I haven't heard of any Jewish people going into the Alaska mosque while they're praying and uh, Hack them to death. hacking them to death mm. with axes. Have you? Nope. No. Well, Israelis are noting a sharp rise in nationalistic motivated attacks. The Shin Bet, Israel's security agency, confirmed on Thursday that a hit and run incident last month at a bus stop south of Jerusalem in which three IDF soldiers were wounded was in fact an intentional terrorist attack and not an accident as had been widely reported. Not by us. Hmm. 
The driver of the vehicle, Hamam Masalma, is a Hamas member and has confessed to deliberately hitting the soldiers, the Sheen Bet said. Meanwhile, police have noted an uptick in rock attacks and other violence directed against Jewish vehicles and homes in several parts of the country, with a car being stoned on Thursday in the Negev between Nevatim and Demona. Similar attacks have been reported on roads in several other parts of the country. Oh, and here's some good news. It looks like Yehuda Gleek is about to be released from the hospital on Sunday. Officials at Shari Zedek Medical Center in Jerusalem announced on Thursday that Temple Mount activist Yehuda Gleek has recovered sufficiently from the attempt on his life to be released from the hospital this Sunday. Motaz Hijazi, a member of the Islamic Jihad terror militia, shot Gleek four times at close range outside the Menachem Begin Heritage Center in Jerusalem last month. And then he was killed in a shootout with police early the next morning. Hmm. Well, Tel Aviv wins the World's Smart Cities Award. The Smart City Expo World Congress 2014 in Barcelona, Spain, featured president presentations of technological advances and innovative techniques from municipal management from 250 cities around the world, with Tel Aviv coming out of, of the competition in first place. Among the innovations <laughs> the Tel Aviv delegation displayed at the Congress was a Digitel platform and free Wi-Fi available to city residents, which allow them to have timely, location-specific alerts of road conditions, cultural events, and other information downloaded to their mobile devices as well as allowing residents to give elected officials real-time input on various issues, which I think might be a good idea for us. <laughs> well, guess what? Israel issued a statement on Thursday that it will cooperate, not surprisingly, with a UN probe investigating attacks on UNRWA facilities during Operation Protective Edge in Gaza earlier this summer as well as the use of those buildings by the Islamist terror militia Hamas to store weapons. The cooperation extended to the commission, which was personally appointed by UN Secretary, General Secretary Ban Ki-moon, is contrasted by an Israeli decision to not cooperate with a team of investigators dispatched to the Strip by the UN Human Rights Council and headed by Canadian lawyer William Shabas, who has a history of inflammatory anti Israel statements. Mm -hmm. And given a mandate only to investigate Palestinian accusations against Israel while ignoring the terrorist rocket fire into Israel and other relevant aspects of the conflict. I think we read something about that a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago in mm -hmm. their report. A massive amount of fireworks, knives, and tasers police believe were meant to uh, in part be used by rioters clashing with police were seized last week by Jerusalem district detectives and officers from the tax authority and the Ashdod Port Customs police announced on Thursday. Police said the seizure came after Jerusalem detectives ran an undercover investigation along with the tax and customs officials during which they were able to track and seize two shipping containers which came to Ashdod by way of China. The fireworks were hidden among Christmas decorations inside the containers, which were intended for Arab residents of the largely Christian East Jerusalem neighborhood of Beit Hanina. And ha uh, ha ha ha, not good. Why, why would they be wanting Christmas decorations? They don't, Christians want. Well, the Christians might, yeah. Yes, but no, the thing is, is that those rockets, they've actually outlawed this particular type of rocket because right. in the Arab rioting, the Arabs have been using these rockets to fire directly at police That's and right. IDF soldiers. And it's... Uh, they can be fatal. They can be fatal. So anyway, they've uh, said no more. That's all the time we have news for. I know we love you and we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Mother? Shabbat shalom. God bless you. And pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. Thank <laughs> you.